Welcome everyone. We are so delighted that you've tuned in for Hawthorne University's All About Alumni series. I'm Paula Bartholomew and today I have the pleasure of interviewing our graduate Amy White. And you will have the opportunity to ask her questions directly too. Just type them into the question and answer panel at any time and at the end of the presentation we'll post those for Amy. So great. So hello Amy. Hello. I'm really excited to be here. I'm so, I hope you are. <laughs> I, I am, thank you. Great. It's an honor, really, to, to bring you on and showcase you. So I want to introduce you and then have you share your experiences as a graduate from Hawthorne's Master of Science in Holistic Nutrition's clinical program. So I want to say that Amy White is a board-certified holistic nutritionist and functional nutrition and lifestyle practitioner. She's an advocate and teacher of living a low-carb life, and she helps women learn to use fat for fuel so they kick their sugar habit increase their energy, lose weight, and enjoy the fun and freedom that comes with age. I really love that, the fun and freedom that comes with age. It's, so, it's really positive and it's very empowering, Amy. So I love that right off the bat about your bio. And then your presentation, Three Years to Build a Business, Amy's Story and Process, Two Years In. Amy says that passion is step one, education is step two, and building the business is step three. But just having the knowledge doesn't mean you instantly have business. So she will tell us how she learned to build a business infrastructure, to use social media to grow her, rich, her reach, and how to define an ideal client and niche, how to build an online group program, and how to use Facebook ads to target a perfect client, how to shift mindset with focused intention, awareness, and positive energy, and continue her education, gain additional certifications, and become board certified all while she continues learning and growing herself and her business. So, Amy, I just have to say wow to that already. You know, you <laughs> started your presentation and I'm at a wow moment. So, uh, are you ready? Are you ready to share? I, I am ready. Uh, yeah. Right. Okay. It's up to you now. Let's have you dive in okay. and um, really tell us about the three distinct steps that have brought you to where you currently are in the wellness world. Um, okay, so first of all, right, we have to have a passion for what we're interested in. So that's step one. And then step two is for a lot of us, you know, obtaining the education that kind of goes with that passion. And then finally, which I'm finding is the harder part, but also the very exciting part is building the business. So I, you know, the passion around food and nutrition and the education that went, you know, with food and nutrition and then the food nutrition business. Um, so my passion, unlike a lot of people, um, wasn't because of me. So I didn't actually have issues or, or that I really recognized. It was because of my daughter. So I was drawn to food nutrition um, because of my daughter. So <laughs> really always gut issues, of course. Mm -hmm. um, so she, you know, she'd always had some gut issues since she was born. So we've been told her whole life that she suffered with reflux. Um, and, you know, I'm such a great mom. I'm like, well, she seems fine. You know, she's a good student. She's an athlete. She's kind of happy kid. But as we got uh, closer to her going off to college, I did realize that she really didn't feel her best. I mean, it was clear that she had a very limited um, selection of foods that she could eat eat that she didn't make her feel sick. She certainly couldn't eat in restaurants. She always felt sick if we were in a restaurant. Mm -hmm. um, so we did finally go see a gastroenterologist. I was like, let's just go see the best. Let's get it figured out. Let's get you healthy and send you off to school. Mm -hmm. um, so the gastro doctor did the same thing every everyone had done her whole life, which was put her on antacids. I think she went on antacids when she was like eight. It was, you know, I didn't know. Um, but that didn't work. So we, we saw the gastro doctor and, and we scheduled a scope. So she went into the hospital and she had that whole intestinal invasive mm -hmm. scope done. Right. Um, the thing that was crazy was when she was done, the gastro doctor comes over and she's like, oh, good news. She's fine. And I got <laughs> it. But she wasn't fine when we got here and nothing's changed. So I'm not really sure what fine means. And she smiled and she said, well, her esophagus is just beautiful. She has no signs of reflux, which was awesome because we've been told that she'd had reflux for her whole life. Um, and then she turned and started walking away. And then she stopped and she turned back around and she said, well, I mean, I mean, her small 
intestines red and inflamed, but that's nothing. And then she left. And I was just kind of like, what? You know, I think, what? You know, what? That seems like something to me. So, um, <laughs> what did you do? Right. I, and she was gone. I mean, I was at this point, it was paralyzing because I thought, uh, well, we don't have an answer. And in fact, I have a lot more questions and I had no idea what to do. So, you know, what do you do? You basically complain to your girlfriends, which was the <laughs> best thing I could have done because my girlfriend said, you need to see this nutritionist. And I thought, I don't even know what that is. But, you know, I'm in. I'm grasping at straws at this point. So, yes. What's her name? So we did. So we saw this. Was, was that helpful? Well, she, it turns out, thank God, it turned out she was a holistic nutritionist. She wasn't, uh, she actually was a registered dietitian, but she also wasn't a holistic nutritionist. And so it was helpful. Uh, although all she said was, you need to go gluten free. You know, 10 years ago, that was not as commonplace as it is now. However, I knew what she meant. So of course we left her office and we went to Whole Foods and we bought everything we could find that said gluten-free. And then I would say, don't do that because it's just junk food. Uh, but it, it was a starting point. Um, so that took me to this place where we actually discovered that food was magic. So we went, she went gluten-free. Uh, and I actually had to put a lot of time and energy into uh, relearning how to cook, what gluten-free meant, research, uh, the whole bit. But the whole family went gluten-free. It was just easier that way. But my daughter noticed changes like within days she felt better. But the thing, when I say magic, the thing that was really crazy was she had um, lifelong issues with dandruff and incredibly stinky feet, incredibly stinky. And that was gone. It went away within a week or two. And that's when I was just like, wait a second. There's something going on here. Exactly. So that I was totally hooked. Our feet were trying to detox. Yes. I mean, it was just um, in, you know, in, the, in the dandruff and, you know, the whole bit. It was just amazing. So I couldn't get enough. And so I just started reading everything I could find about food and how it impacted the body. And I quickly uh, ran out of things to read. So the other thing that was happening at this point was I was in my 40s and my body had always been super obedient. And then all of a sudden I started gaining weight, something I'd never really suffered with. And my normal healthy life wasn't having an impact. And this weight was just, I was gaining weight. Yeah. And, um, and so that was interesting. So then when we all started eating better and we started eating real whole foods and you know none of this gluten and all that stuff, all of a sudden my weight stabilized but the thing that was kind of crazy was i also felt better even though i didn't know i didn't feel well so gas bloating symptoms of ibs moodiness it was all just normal right before exactly and it went away so again food is magic but more importantly food's information all right so this takes me where to where that the lead you right education so <laughs> again as i said i couldn't get enough um, and I ran out of things to read. So I looked at my husband. And I'm like, I'm going to have to take a class because I need more stuff to read. And at the time we were in Chicago, so we were surrounded by universities. So yeah. I immediately was like, I'm going to take an RD program. I'm just going to get in one. I'm going to do it. And that seemed like a great idea until I got the syllabus. And I started <laughs> reading. Yes. You're laughing because you know. I started reading the syllabus and I looked at my husband. I was like, I can't take this class. They're saying everything I no longer believe. I cannot sit through four years of that. Okay. Um, and you know, holistic nutrition um, is an important phrase and I didn't know it. And so when I started researching, I didn't know what I was looking for, but eventually I did stumble upon holistic nutrition and then that's how I found Hawthorne, thank God. <laughs> um, so that, that was, I found a bunch of programs actually, but Hawthorne was the one that just really spoke to me. And so I dove in and I loved it. I loved it. Right. All right. Tell us a little bit about your time with Hawthorne. Well, it was actually probably longer than um, most people's. It took, I think it took me like, oh my gosh, three years, maybe more than three years to finish. Mm -hmm. But that's because I have never had this ability to like solely focus on one thing. I tend to be sort of scattered. So during my time at Hawthorne, which on its own was, you know, such a huge program, I also sort of found myself doing some complementary education. So in 
in conjunction with um, my master's program, I also did a nine-month holistic nutrition lab full body systems program with Andrea Nakayama. I also dug into some stuff with Chris Kresser, just specific things that I was interested in. And then, of course, everybody's always talking about labs, and I just wanted to know everything. So I was doing Dick and Weatherby's course on that. Mm -hmm. um, but I... I also was introduced to Dr. Mackey and his Monday afternoon mastermind group. So I did yeah. that every Monday. I still do that. Um, and then on top of the reading from Hawthorne, there was always a list of other great books, you know, for each class. So of course I had to get all those books and read those too. And um, so it took me a long time. There was a lot of information that I was um, enjoying. And well, you were a curious student, Amy, and and you know. Um, you reach out to, to learn as much as you can. And so when resources are availed to you, you, you take advantage of it. And I've really appreciated that. And, you know, Hawthorne's Master of Science in Holistic Nutrition program is unique in that it's a clinical training program combined in the master's. And so there's the length. I mean, yes, it's unusual to have a 60 credit master's program, but when it's clinical training, it allows you to go into to business and do the work that you do and gather the additional education and resources that you have. You know, th that's the benefit of it and the, oh, yeah. it the was, beauty of it, really. And then and working with Dr. Maki, I mean, this is this is an ongoing group of, you know, just doing clinical practice together. So. Mm -hmm. And I can't I can't say enough about having that, just having those those side groups, because then you have that confidence or you have that um, that resource you know that you can jump into when you do come across something or a client you're working with and you're just like I, you know I ooh, I really would like this, another opinion about this and so you can jump into these groups and say hey I have this client and it's so nice to know you have that and these people have your back and they're all thinking with you it's really really great and um, I did eventually graduate. <laughs> When did you graduate, Amy? I graduated finally in October 2016. All right, you've got a couple of years out. And were you continuing your studies since then? I mean, you were you were studying then, so have you continued? Well, yes. Yeah. So as soon well, as soon as I started, as soon as I graduated, I knew I wanted to get my board certification. So mm -hmm. I immediately jumped into studying for that. And I my plan, so I graduated in October. My plan was to take the exam in the spring, which I did, and I did graduate or I passed the exam, thank goodness. Um, it's it's hard. It's it's yeah. worth six months of study. Um, mm -hmm. So I did pass that. But you know what was kind of cool is I had started working for a doctor prior to graduating from Hawthorne. Um, I just we at this point we'd moved to California and um, I it was just sort of this serendipitous situation. I just got in, involved with this doctor and he he hired me to work in his office as his nutrition coach. Um, and I'd probably been doing that almost a year before I graduated from Hawthorne, um, which was amazing because when you do your board certification, you aren't fully certified mm -hmm. until you get a certain number of clinical hours. Mm -hmm. And because I'd been working for the doctor I, and, and also seeing private clients at the same time, I had all of my clinical hours. So I was able to get my full certification immediately after I passed the exam. That's which fantastic. Was, yeah, that was really, that was a huge bonus. Um, so this was all going on. I'm working at the doctor's office, which is fabulous. I'm seeing private clients. I'm still at a place where I felt like something was missing. So this is that, and I don't know if people listening can um, relate to this, but this is where that imposter syndrome and negative self-talk kind of comes in. Yeah, so, I think it's really important for you to talk about what it was like for you just starting out because this isn't uncommon. Right. It's hard. And and so the other thing I will say is I have yet to encounter a disgruntled client. I have always had my clients are super happy. And um but yet I still felt like I didn't know enough or there was something missing or I was a fraud or whatever. And you know I don't know why because all of my clients are so happy. Um, you know, the patients at the doctor's office were super easy. They were just nutrition focused. It was basically, you know, eat real food. It's good for you. And it was fun. It's fun to talk about. But the doctor would handle any kind of weird health stuff. Um, it was my private clients where it got tricky because it was I was seeing anybody that would call. And I, you know, my first client was somebody with blood cancer. And then the next client was somebody with stage three kidney failure. Then I had multiple autoimmune conditions, some of which I'd never heard of. Um, 
weight loss clients, clients with fatigue, clients with depression, anxiety, osteoporosis. You know, it was just this ongoing list of every single person was new and it was exhausting. Um, and you, 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 those are all the desperates that have seen yeah. everybody else and hadn't gotten any results, any answers or anything. And they found you. In desperate, that's a really that's it. That's true. That's what it was. And it, oh boy, so it was hard. I mean, it but was. It sounds like it was overwhelming for you too. Well, and yes, and I think so. That overwhelm, I think, manifested as this need for me to learn more, or you know, just constantly telling myself, "Well, I clearly don't know enough because I'm seeing these people, and I have to continue to do all this research," which isn't, you know, in retrospect, of course, you know, you're not going to know, you can't know everything. But I did have this sort of belief that if I got more credentials, I would, you know, just magically know everything. It, it, yeah. I don't know. It's just that, that validation some way. Uh, and I am a lifelong learner, as I sort of pointed out. I love to learn things. So it, it was easy for me to rationalize why I should take another class. Um, and it was also a way for me to rationalize why maybe my phone wasn't ringing off the hook with private clients. Well, I'm too busy. I need to learn more. Or, oh, I can't take private clients, you know, I'm busy doing this other thing. So another way to rationalize, you know, my fear around seeing clients, perhaps. Um, so I did hunt for another program and I did end up with uh, functional nutrition and lifestyle practitioner certification. Again, this was actually again through Andrea Nakayama, which is interesting because I looked at a couple programs and um, I, I didn't initially think I would do this program, but then Again, it just seemed, it felt right. And it was a very small group program. I think there were only 12 of us in the group and um, it was amazing. It, and I, I think we started in September and I was certified in December. I loved this program. Um, it really helped with my confidence level. Mm -hmm. She worked with us and you know we learned functional medicine uh, structure and frameworks and how to use those with clients. But the biggest thing that I got out of her program was this idea that you don't have to know everything and you shouldn't want to. That's that, huge. huge. That was life changing for me. So that was that was the big the big takeaway. I mean, she really made it clear that if you go in to meeting a client and you're already like, oh, they have Hashimoto's or I know exactly what their issue is and I know exactly what they need to do. And she said, you're not going to listen to the client you're not going to hear their story and 90% of what they want is somebody to listen and then you will kind of figure out really what's going on and then to use those functional medicine frameworks to kind of outline their health history then take that information and build it into a matrix where you can look at you know eight different physiological function areas of the body and see where things are building and where you kind of want to attack first it was it was huge, but just this idea alone of not having to know everything, th that was it. It was the whole program was worth just that statement. <laughs> I mean, it was that changed everything for me, and I really. You know, felt I mean, it's, it's, a, it's such a relief for you, huge. and it, it seems to have been a way for you to move forward. Definitely. So this once once I understood this, and that most of importantly the client shouldn't want you to know everything if they if they expect you to sit down and be like i know what's wrong with you this is what you have to do they're they're not going to be successful because they're also not digging deeper to find out what really is going on um so yeah so this is when i was like oh now i i am ready to build my business i'm ready to dig in and find the clients and work with the clients and i know i can do this and you know like it, it really changed my confidence level so how do you build a business? Informal marketing, education, social media. Oh my God. It, it just, I thought, okay, I, I, that elusive email list that I'm supposed to build. Now I will say that's the first slide. I said three years to building a business. Um, I really didn't dig in to this whole idea of like wanting to flesh out my business until January of this year. So it's been actually less than a year. Um, but again, how do you build the email list? Well, you have to have a blog, you have to have a Facebook business page, you'd have to do Facebook lives, Facebook ads, uh, maybe have another Facebook group, um, be active on Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest. I mean, oh my gosh. So, so you got further distracted. 
Right, exactly. Yet another reason why I shouldn't be seeing clients. I have to really work on this email list. Um, so I did have a blog. I actually started my blog when I started Hawthorne because I was learning so much cool information that I wanted a, a platform to share, um, which at first I was doing often. And then I slowly neg started to neglect my blog. Um, and at some point during those years, I did create a Facebook business page. I must have stumbled upon something that said, oh, here's how you create a Facebook business page. So I did. Um, and that I was in and out of more than my blog. But eventually that sort of got neglected as well. Um, I had Instagram. I had no idea how to use it. I was on Twitter, but not really. I just had a, my kids set up a Twitter account somewhere along the way for me. I had no idea what Pinterest was. Um, so what did I do? I started taking all those free seminars that you see online all the time. This is how you use Facebook ads. This is how you use Instagram to build a business, blah, blah, blah. Um, so I did. I dove in. And, uh, They're nice to have, though, those free seminars. They are. And, and I have to say most of them were worth it. Like they, I did get good information out of them. Um, you know, I learned that I needed to create a monthly theme for my blog and my Facebook business page. So that really helps. I create a theme every month and then everything that I put on the blog or talk about on Facebook kind of relates back to that monthly theme. So that's kind of helpful for some structure. I took a class on how to do a live video. And so now I feel pretty confident doing Facebook Lives and I try to do that consistently every Wednesday on my Facebook page. Um, I learned how to use Canva, which is a free, um, uh, kind of like a free Photoshop. Um, and so I use that to create graphics for Instagram and Facebook and Pinterest. Uh, I did to finally learn about Pinterest. I took a class and I learned about that and I started Pinterest in May. And that's actually grown huge. So I started in May, I had zero followers, and I now I think I have, uh, I almost have 2,000 followers on Pinterest, and my monthly views and engagement are, are really high. Again, it hasn't all really translated into more email clients. I mean, in January, I had 87 people on my email list, and today I have like 265. So there's been some growth, but it's not like I have thousands of people on my email list. Um, and I worked really hard for those people. And it just, you know, it just was exhausting. And um, on top of the, you know, uh, online or social media stuff, you know, finding an audience locally. So I do some, I was doing free talks. Um, okay, so you've done, you've done more, you've done more. <laughs> Yeah, so in client referrals, and then I, I did a free 12-week program. Um, someone in my area started a local wellness collective, which is so cool. So I was invited into that group, and we have a, a website and Facebook page for that group. But again, I haven't I haven't gotten any new clients from that. Um, I was invited to be on a menopause summit, and I was recently interviewed on a meal planning program as a guest expert so anytime anybody asks me to speak the answer is always a yes 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 I would never you know never say no I'll just say yes and then I'll figure it out um so no, beautiful. you know the, your, your willingness to say yes is very powerful and while you say you haven't been getting emails for private clients you are getting noticed I mean to be invited on a summit Amy it's just well, that, yeah, I think that mostly comes through, again, contacts. So I have friends from Hawthorne that I've kept in touch with and that I probably speak to regularly, daily. And one of those friends was invited on the summit. And they said, oh, you need to talk to my friend Amy. She should be, you know. So that's how that kind of works, mm -hmm. um, you know, which, is, which is really cool. But, again, all of this, um, you know, it's a full-time job just trying to stay on top of the social media. And it is exhausting again. And, you know, all of that work and my phone still wasn't ringing off the hook. I will admit, I do get calls and I, and I still have, you know, there's some mindset stuff that I am now dealing with, but I literally would get calls and I would talk people out of working with me because <laughs> I'm like, you can do it. You know, we spent an hour on the phone. You know what to do now. You don't need me. So crazy stuff. Um, Did you stop that? <laughs> I Yes, yes. I'm at a point now where I'm like, okay, I'm working. You know, there's a lot. So I was 
I, basically, I really needed to sort of find my ideal client, figure out what I wanted to do. I knew what I wanted to do for a program. That 12-week program that I did for free has been churning in my head for two years. I know that's my program. I just didn't know how to get it in front of people. So that's when I started going, all right, I think I might need some help building this business so I did finally commit to some formal wellness business training and again I researched um, and I did decide on this program uh, with Yuri Elkham I'm not sure if that's how you say his last name but it's yeah. his health so I'm, I'm curious to, to hear about this and, and what you've learned and the tools that you've gained from this yeah and I'm, I'm still in this program so it's it's I I'm so glad I signed up for it because it's doing everything I needed. It's helping helping me organize everything and, and actually put it in a format that I can now use with clients online. So the big thing, the big aha moment um, that I kind of had been building to in my head was that I can't be everyone, everything to everyone. And some people maybe can, I didn't want to be. Um, so really, once I started to commit to growing this private business, I wanted to work less at the doctor's office. But I, I re, you know, I realized that I couldn't just take every person that called or everyone off the street because then I would still be back in that mode of having to reinvent the wheel every time I met with a new client. So I wanted and to it focus. Seem like you know the client work as much as you're trying to get back to it has been the most satisfying for you. Well, so right. Well, it is because people, are, well, it's so funny because I work with people and, and we meet for so long and they seem to be doing really well and they seem happy. Then I don't hear from them and I think, you know, oh, okay. And then out of the blue, they'll go, oh my God, I, you know, I, you know, I lost 35 pounds and I feel so great. And I'm like, oh, oh good to know. Thanks for letting me know, you know, so it's always nice when I do get that feedback eventually, but, um, really, you know, working or, or focusing on something that I enjoy joy um, and being able to just continue to read into information about a topic that really excites me mm -hmm. and get, so then I get to keep learning about this one thing that I love so that for me was like okay I need to focus so the Yuri's program has really helped me focus in on what I want to do and how I want to do it um, so that would be that whole idea of defining a niche and we all hear about this everybody talks about it and I was very mm -hmm. resistant to this um, it just, but it helps you get laser focused. Right, right, exactly. So at first I, I was resistant because it felt like I was just going to be, it was going to be so limiting. But now I love it because I am able to, def, you know, get laser focused to pick what it is out of all the things in nutrition. What is the one thing that really excites me? And then focus in on that. Um, so it, it just helps you know you, you do become an expert because you don't have to reinvent the wheel and you do get to dig into the research so it's it's very it's empowering um, and I can still cast a wide net when it comes to nutritional information and current scientific studies but my passion is really around metabolic function particularly helping people eliminate sugar and learn how to burn body fat as a fuel so and I love the topic it interests me and it aligns with my life. So my husband and I are grain-free, sugar-free. Uh, we practice intermittent fasting. We're fully fat adapted. My daughter and her family also live the same way. And for the clientele that I want to work with, this is, a, for the most, most of them, it's a very good approach. Now at the same time, so my ideal client is going to be a woman who's over 40. Um, she basically kind of feels like a stranger in her own body. So she's somebody who's probably got some excess weight to lose. She's got blood sugar issues. Um, certainly there's some gut issues there. I, you know, I have to, I haven't fully um, fleshed out the wording for this, but you know, she's got some concerns about the future of her health. Uh, no major diagnoses. So she's not sick, so to speak. Maybe, you know, over, again, overweight, blood sugar issues, maybe a recent diagnosis of prediabetes or type 2 diabetes, um, which is the area that I love to play in. Um, she's knows she needs to make changes. She's ready to make changes. She doesn't know what she needs to do. She wants to feel good. She wants to look good. Again, enjoy your life. Um, and kind of get her doctor off her back, you know, because at this point, the doctor's probably pushing uh, prescription medications, which she doesn't want to take. Mm -hmm. So for these women, my approach will help. 
you know, I'm going to help them balance their metabolic hormones. I'm going to help them get off the sugar, what's going to balance their blood sugar issues. And these are women who want a do it with me program. So one of the things that always holds me back or has in the past is that all the information is out there. But what I finally realized was just because it's out there doesn't mean people want to dig through it. So the, my ideal client is somebody who's like, no, I want you to help me. <laughs> um, you know, so finding those people is tricky. Um, which brings me to then the business model. Do I want to work with one-on-one? -on -one? Do I want to work in groups? Do I want to work locally? Do I want to work virtually? So for me, I really want to do group counseling. And I really want to work virtually because I live in a small community. The reach is tiny. Um, so doing like the Zoom conferencing online is really what I want to do. Um, and Yuri's program has helped me um, recognize that that's, that's what I want to do. Um, so it just I just get my energy from groups. One-on-one, -on -one is like you were saying, it, it wasn't that satisfying for me. It was draining. It was, it was mm -hmm. exhausting. Uh, so other areas of this program that I'm doing with him are, you know, you define the ideal niche, you de determine the business model, so how you want to work with people, you then create a webinar that introduces your proprietary group program, which I have finally now gotten on paper and uh, outlined, and I'm so excited. Then the next step is finding the ideal client, so through uh, the webinar and Facebook ads. So using Facebook ads to get in front of the right people, then booking a strategic call, and then, um, you know, kind of identifying through the call if this is an ideal client or not. So not working with everyone. You get to be really selective. And then if it is the ideal client, signing them into the program. So using targeted Facebook ads to get them to the webinar. Um, all of that is where I'm at now. I'm, I'm at the point now where I'm starting to put my Facebook ads together. So I, I wish I could tell you, wow, it works so well and so quickly, but I can't because I'm not there yet. But other people in my group are, are there and they're, they're doing well. So I'm excited. All right, we'll have you back, um, and we'll have, to, we'll, we'll give a, have a follow up, a follow up on this, Amy, because it's important. Everything that you're putting into it to see how it manifests for you. Yeah, I yeah, that would be uh, my pleasure. Um, so again, that's kind of where I'm at. Unfortunately, <laughs> well, you know, no, no, look at this. You're you're moving on. You're moving on. It seems like there's always something new around the corner for you. Yes. So, let's so, talk yeah. mindfulness, Amy. Well, this brings us back to that whole idea of self negative self talk, limiting beliefs, that fear mindset. Why why maybe I shouldn't be working with a client? You know that nonsense. Um, so when I got interested in Yuri's program. Like I said, I was investigating a bunch of different programs and I was completely hit by this principle of, you know, where the mind goes, the energy flows. And it was something I always believed, but it, it just, it was just two things just collided. And I know things like that happen for a reason. And so it became really clear to me that this was the next big piece that I can add into my um, client work because I think it's so important it, it, you know the body is one piece so I sort of feel like I'm at that point where I'm going to be able to meld that physical or that mechanical with the metaphysical so that mechanical body then with also the mind because I don't think you can really get those giant lifestyle shifts and changes yes. without a mindset shift and so this is really fun to kind of start digging into this and offering this to people like, you know, helping them understand or showing them how they can do some, um, uh, you know, how to meditate programs and then journal prompts about digging in a little bit deeper about things that are happening and then visualizing their future and you know, the goals. Um, so again, we're back to that whole idea where attention goes, energy flows. So getting people to start feeling better through the nutrition and then start getting them to really understand that lifestyle factors are so important to their overall health. Um, which brings me to the end. So October 2019, so next October, it will be three years after I graduated from Hawthorne. But really, I'm still only going to be two years into this building a business. And I will say that I heard that idea that it takes three years to build a business from a friend who's 
I got a friend who's built many businesses and sold many businesses and he was the one who said you you have to give yourself three years to build a business don't give up before you've put three solid years into building the business um, so that's kind of where that idea came from so I feel like I kind of have two more years but I, I don't really think I'm gonna need it I really think that come January um, I'm gonna you know things are going to be rolling and I'm, I'm going to be busy and I fully expect to have a wait list by the summer of next year and uh, be working on complementary programs to my big program so I'm excited I'm super excited I'm excited for you and it sounds like you having a focus attention intention is really leading you to exactly where you meant to be and want to be right I 100% totally believe it yeah it's uh it's it's fun it's yeah my husband and i are kind of on the same place the same wavelength right now with that and everything is just we are la we're just laughing on every day because this cool stuff keeps happening <laughs> it's kind of fun i love it too so you know i love this talk about energy flows <laughs> it just really it right. excites me because you're focusing your attention, your in, intentions, and you're teaching others and your clients that you're working with how to use these tools too. So yeah. it's accelerating their progress with their intentions and helping them narrow their focus of what clearly their goals are and being able to make step-by-step -step decisions of, of how to get there with your support. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah, I, 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 it's exciting. I feel really good about it, yeah. Is there anything else that you want to share while you're with us, Amy? Any closing thoughts? Um, you know, I, just, I guess the only other thing I was thinking about that I didn't put in the slideshow, other areas that I am trying to, you know, make a little bit of money is um, affiliate programs. So, I, I, you know, I have an online full script account for supplements. And then I have a couple of products that I use that I am an affiliate marketer for. Um, so there's little things like that. Um, you know, I, you know, we all see those online summits, and I'm a fill, and I'm an affiliate with that program. So mm -hmm. when I promote online summits, if people end up purchasing those summits, then I get some money from them. So those are actually really good things to kind of look for if you're if you're in line with them, if they, you know, ethically and morally are in in line with you. I think those are things to 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 use. Um, I don't do a lot because you know I I won't I will only promote something that I use or that I think is actually useful. So I'm not going to just be like, hey, you should buy this almond flour by so and so or whatever. You know, I'm, I just I won't do that. But I do think that is something that you shouldn't overlook, and it is an, a, definitely a way to make a little bit of money here and there. Mm -hmm. And are you set up for um, with full script or Wellevate, anything like that for yeah, yes. having an I online have dispensary? I do. I have an online dispensary with Fullscript. I also have an account with Zymogen because Zymogen doesn't play well with others. You have to have no, only Zymogen, which is annoying because there's a couple things from Zymogen that I really like. And I have it set up on my website so that people can click right in and create accounts. So I explain how they can do it. So that's just, you know, a shot in the dark. You know, if you get some rando person on the website that's like, oh, yeah, I want to have a pharmaceutical grade supplements, I think I'll make an account through you. Mostly yeah. it's my clients. Um, and for a long time, I didn't make any money on supplements because it was family and friends. And so I always gave everybody my discount. But I am now at a point where I actually keep getting a payback from full script because clients have um, started reordering their stuff. So that's really cool. That's very cool. All right, well, I'm really excited for you. I'm, I'm excited for your progress. I'm impressed with your dedication. I'm impressed that 83 years ago you didn't know, or how, how long ago was it that you didn't know what a nutritionist was? It's probably 10 years you, ago. 10 years now ago. You are. <laughs> now you are. I know, right? You're thriving, <laughs> family's thriving, health is improving, your community's health is improving, and you're about to soar, Amy, um, with everything that you've put in to this you're very well poised now to launch and so I'm looking forward to January for you and the the additional programs that you're working on and the supporting of your clients and and your ongoing pursuit of healthy aging and a fun life for yourself and and the people that you work with 
Well, I appreciate that. I, I'm excited and um, yeah, I, it's, it's all good. It's just really, it's really good. And it, you really can live a happy, healthy life. So I keep seeing clients succeed and it's empowering and exciting. So I know I'm doing something right. <laughs> I validate that comment. <laughs> <I concur. laughs> so bravo, Amy, and thank you so much for taking the time and coming on and sharing your experiences with us. And like I said, I want you to come back and do some updates from time to time. I would love to, and it was really my pleasure to be here. I really appreciate you asking. So yeah, it was, it was wonderful. Thank you. You bet. I look forward to you visiting again and continuing to share your good works. Until then, um, I wish you the best. And um, to everybody, thank you for joining in on this special All About Alumni with Amy. And um, you can help us spread the word and show up yourself for our next All About Alumni. We'll meet here again on Wednesday, December 6th at noon Pacific time with graduate Wendy Turner Larson. She's a graduate from our MNC e program. And until then, I wish you all the best of health and take good care. Thanks again, Amy.